What's up guys? What's growing on? So it's a Monday morning here at Green Dreams and we're a little bit short-handed. We had a uh, seven-day work week last week kind of trying to crunch here and get a lot of jobs wrapped up. I'm getting ready to start phase two on that Jubilee project back down in Bradenton and phase two we're going to be planting some of these uh, ponds out that they're trying to create on the property a little bit more of a native planting with a little bit of a kind of a definiated walk going through a nature area where all those native plants will be marked in the landscape um, we're going to be extending some of the food forest area adding some citrus actually underneath a couple of the oak trees and bringing in some mango varieties we didn't bring in prior so we're going to be bringing in some of these new zills varieties um, to that to that project so it's kind of exciting kind of a, a busy a busy month to say the least we'll be there probably through the beginning of November so I'm crunching to get as much as I, I can done here before we get going on that plus trying to source materials deal with other clients go 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 so I've had a lot of people ask me you know the steps to you know starting a food forest you know what would be that first step what would be that second step um, you know how to how to remove the sod. So this video today is just gonna show you all how we take out the sod in the backyard. Um, we're doing a, basically a backyard food forest here. And this is kind of in that Newport Ritchie area. You can see this is gonna be a, uh, a business in the front. So they have ornamental landscaping in the front yard, grass, and the backyard is gonna be a food forest. And what's really neat about this project is a, uh, a friend of mine, Chris Kelly with uh, Utopia Landscaping. So if you're here in Pasco County, Pinellas County, you need a, uh, a guy to come out and do landscaping lawn work for you, you can call Chris. He does a good job at cutting grass. It's something we don't do anymore. Um, was asked by the client about getting a garden started here. Chris knew that was my specialty. You know, I also used to be in the grass. That's how we know each other. Came out to the farm, bought a bunch of plants for me, and he helped these clients develop a garden in the backyard. And I'm actually really impressed, Chris. You did a good job. Um, you know, they used a basically cinder blocks to create these beds. And hold on one second. I'm kind of walking here into the backyard. The whoo, lighting was going to get a little bit rough, but they used cinder blocks to create these beds here in the backyard. You'll see, and it, it turned out really, really nice. And they've got perennial vegetables. We have everything from moringa, longevity spinach. Um, there's even some fruit trees, and I think this was more of a test site. You know, they, they originally planted all of these vegetables in these beds, you know, to kind of see how they were going to like it, you know, how, how successful they were going to be. You know, if this is something they wanted to expand, and, you know, now they've had these beds for maybe, you know, four months, and, you know, Chris is like, listen, you guys are really getting into this. This isn't my forte. This isn't my specialty. Contact Pete. So they, you know, they had contacted me and they're like, all right, you know, we're having a lot of success, you know, back here at these raised beds, you know, we, we want the full on food forest. So kind of right now we're in the process of removing the grass in the backyard. We're going to be taking some of these fruit trees out of these raised beds and we're going to be creating a food forest back here. So those raised beds will be annual vegetable beds. Um, one or two of them will probably have sweet potatoes through the summer. And the rest of the backyard will just have mulch, native plants, and edibles. I think on each side of the property, we're going to have like trellises entering into the backyard. So, you know, over here on the west side, we're going to have a probably a Barbados cherry trellis. We're going to plant a tree on both sides and create a little bit of a walkway in. On this side, we're going to try some muscadine grapes. So those are pretty easy to trellis. The Barbados cherries I actually tried at my own house. It worked out pretty well. Um, so I wanted to point out, I think the main point of this video, like I said, and lighting is kind of terrible right there, um, was to show you how we remove grass from a backyard. So there's, you know, obviously many ways to remove the grass. And this is an expensive part of the project. So I get clients all the time that say, you know, they see that number on the grass removal and they, I think they question, you know, can we do that to save the money? And, you know, that's something that you can definitely do to save the money, but that's also something that you need to know what you're getting yourself into. There's a lot of work involved there. And, you know, same thing with the client here. You know, I said, sure, you're more than welcome to attempt it. There'll be no hard feelings. If you guys get the grass out, that's great. Um, if not, you know, we'll take care of it. Well, you know, we're here today and, you know, they, they attempted taking out this grass here in the front of this bed. And I think they kind of, you know, they realized well, what was going on and how hard it is. So we use a sod cutter to remove grass, typically speaking. You know, if you have a small garden area you're establishing, you don't have a lot of those invasive weeds, you can just sheet mulch. You know, but when you're removing moving 2,000 square foot, like we're doing here in this backyard, you know, that's a lot of cardboard. Couldn't get them out, you know, couldn't get the amount of cardboard we needed to get a thick enough layer also means we need to put the mulch down a little bit thicker so we really prefer you know this method here with the sod cutter 
and uh, it's a little bit in the dark right now. I'm gonna show you us taking a strip out with that. And then basically I'll show you the tools that we use down here in between the beds where that sod cutter doesn't you know, fit in. So the sod cutter has a blade that goes like this and you can adjust the height of that blade anywhere from you know, just at the soil surface to maybe three inches below that soil surface. So what we really like is it's doing you know, that least amount of root and soil disturbance to get the sod out. So that little blade going like this, we can set it to the height we want. We could literally roll this up like a carpet and you know get the material out of here. So in some cases, you know, after I sod cut this, um, we come through with what we call like a plate scraper or a scuffle hoe on all the edges that we can't get through with the, the you know, with that sod cutter. A lot of times we'll haul that organic material out. Well, here on this site, I'm very lucky they live on a reserve. There's a low area there in the back. Um, a lot of that organic material is just going to go on the back side of the fence. We'll level it out back there and. I didn't tell you this, but we are gonna grill a plant, probably a couple of jackfruits and a couple of bananas back there. So shh, don't tell anybody, so. What's growing on? So lunch is done, sun is up a little higher. We're about 80% of the way done here with this sod tear out. And unfortunately I did just find the uh, Bright House cable line. It was about eight inches deep in the whole yard. And we had that one little section there where it was probably an inch below ground surface. So got a couple little areas to finish up. Just wanted to show you guys the uh, sod removal. So this area needs to be cut again. That little spot needs to be cut. There's a little spot right here, it's in the shadow, it needs to be cut, but other than that, this, and uh, raking it out, and we'll start moving the fruit trees, so. About ready to plant this guy out. What we'll do up here, and something that we commonly notice, you know, so, I don't know who's gonna be maintaining this, but you know, wherever the grass is gonna meet the bed, some type of definiation there, whether it be, um, we use Sherlock edging a lot, concrete curbing, stones, bottles, whatever you want to use. I, I suggest putting something there to just kind of keep that separation unless you're going to be out here running a stick edger all the time trying to control, you know, the grass from coming into the mulch. So on this one, we're going to be using little 12 inch bricks, I'll try to drop them down to the ground about halfway and run them across on each side. And like I said, this side will have a grape arbor. The other side will have a passion fruit arbor. Obviously, it'll take a little bit of time to fill in and look right, but I'll come back when that is filled in and show you all. So hold tight. We're going to get this cleaned up and start planting. All right, you know what time it is. It's almost 4 o'clock, and we are wrapped up here. I was shorthanded, been on the job all day, and I'm not complaining. I'd much rather be over here working in this beautiful weather than out... Uh, you know, giving estimates, working in the office, cooped up in there. Um, much more fun for me to actually be out here working with the guys. So a little shorthanded today. It's been a long weekend, like I said earlier. But we've got this site now completely prepped out. All of the dirt's gone. Um, we've actually moved about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve fruit trees that I had sold to that other landscaper I was telling you about that were originally put in those beds along the back. That's where they, you know, best found them suited. Like I said, kind of change of direction here with adding, you know, a food forest in the backyard. So we've given these trees a little bit more space. So, I mean, you know, all the way over here on the far side of the property, that's where we're gonna have that Barbados tre uh, cherry trellis. Um, there's a Australian mulberry, there's a mango, there's a lychee. We're gonna be putting a couple of clumps of uh, graceful bamboo in that little gap down there in the corner. So like I, we've got a really good windbreak over here on the northeast, but there's a little bit of an open area over there where we have some horse pasture. I don't know if you guys can quite see that there in the back, but it opens up. So, you know, the wind was really blowing through there, a bit of a tunnel. Um, over here on this side, I've got avocados and um, strawberry tree and star fruit, a peach that I just did some pruning on, and then ever-bearing mulberry. And I'll just turn this camera around, kind of show you guys the site a little bit. 
So you can see we've removed all the soil. We're gonna be putting a brick line in here to separate the grass from the food forest. And this will be the entry to the food forest. And we're actually gonna put a little bit of a uh, arbor in here. Not really properly growing grapes the way they should on a wire, but they wanted to have some muscadine grapes. So we'll have an arbor of muscadines entering into the garden. Like I had mentioned, these trees just came out. You can see that sod cutter did a really good job. And they had two gutters where they were getting a little bit of a washout. Like I said, this backyard's really flowing down into the back. So we're gonna be putting a banana pit in here. You can see we dug the pit. We're gonna put two bananas on this one. We have an overflow, so once the pit fills up, and we are gonna add mulch in there. It's not gonna be just a dirt pit. You know, that'll get about at least halfway to three quarters of the way filled with mulch. So it'll just be like an indentation. It'll give the homeowners, you know, a place to come out and put that compost in the landscape. Another thing we're gonna do, so we have two compost things going on here. We're gonna be putting tubes in each one of these beds, and that's gonna be like a six inch PVC tube, and that's gonna have an unscrew cap on it, and they're gonna weekly, you know, this day gets compost, this day gets compost, and kind of just go from one day to the next in kind of a circle. So, you know, each bed's gonna get a little bit of compost, and by putting them in the tube with the cap, the worms are, worms are gonna come in there and eat it, you know, bring it out into the bed. I've done that on one or two other gardens. It's worked out really well. So you can see all this soil's gone from the site, completely prepped out here on both sides. And over here on this side of the property, I also have another banana pit. You know, this was another. Water is just flowing down into the back. You know, the whole idea here, stopping that overland flow, we're gonna keep that water around those bananas for as long as possible, so it's not ending up down there in that swamp area. Kind of an overview of the backyard. This is the one Barbados that was here. I'm bringing another Barbados tomorrow. So all these trees I've been showing you, like I said, we're already here. We've just done some relocating. This Australian mulberry was already here. Um, I believe this is a Kent mango. I believe that is a Mauritius lychee. A couple of the bamboos, I brought those, but those haven't been planted yet. They're going on the backside. We're gonna be relocating a couple of these firebish tomorrow. The moringas are going towards the back of the bed and the passion fruits are going on the fence. So site prep is done. As you can see, you know, we, we've brought in no amendments so far. So something I'll point out to y'all, and you'll notice that this is how we plant fruit trees. You know, we've brought zero amendments here. And what I'm hoping you'll notice from this video is that all these trees are about two to three inches above grade. And I'll put, you know, like I had just done in my tree planting video, compost around each of those, um, a little bit of that organic fertilizer around each of those, probably a little bit of biochar around each of those, um, green sand, azomite, that green sand, I might as well bring that back up. Probably not gonna be able to use that much longer. I've got a bag or two left back at the farm and it's just a product that's not available anymore. They're not mining it the way they used to. The mines where they were mining it have shut down. So unfortunately, I'm probably shifting away from the green sand. I'm gonna probably be using ash also on this install. So azomite, biochar, fertilizer, and ash. Um, and then a little bit of compost as a top dress. So this whole backyard, we'll be bringing a trailer load of plants tomorrow. Uh, that'll be another video in itself. So just really wanted to show you guys the, uh, the removal of the sod process, you know, the easiest way we've found to go about that. Hopefully y'all got something out of this. Hopefully it makes your food forest a little bit easier to install. If you did, please like, please subscribe. And you know, if you got an idea I need to know, please put it down in the comments. Thank y'all.